Kia ora koutou tawhakahua whanau. This last week I did a couple shoot in the city here in Wellington with this couple here, Perna and Ishok. And we shot at a number of locations, like on Lampton Quay, and we went to the waterfront, and botanical gardens, and we went to Shelly Bay. It was just a fun couple of hours shooting, but it's also hard work. In this video, I'm going to take you through behind the scenes and show you how the shoot actually went down, show you a few of the photos, and tell you what happened along the way. First up, we were in Lampton Quay. Okay, guys, so for starters, we're going to be like on this light just here and we're going to be facing this way towards me. One of the initial things that comes to mind when embarking on a shoot like this is doing it out in public and in a busy space and it actually creates quite a bit of like nervousness or anxiety. Really nice And light. we chose this as our first really location. Nice I know it's a little bit, but don't worry. Okay. We're here to get your photos, okay? Yeah. So we're going to get your... <laughs> I know, I know, it's okay. But just come in close and just like hang out like you would hang out normally. But you might actually choose to shoot in a more quiet or slightly isolated area first yeah, nice. just to ease into it. It's true that it's hard for your clients to be relaxed as soon as they turn up in front of the camera, but it also runs true that it's just as hard for you as the photographer, because in many cases it's the first time you're meeting these folks and you're immediately turning up trying to produce work that you can deliver to them later on. And generally speaking that comes as the levels of comfort increase during the whole entirety of the shoot. And as you'll see during this video, it kind of happens about midway through, for both the clients and also me. Okay, here we go. Nice, and just your hand up on your hand up on a strong, yeah, on, on his front chest here. Yeah, yeah, like this. And coming nice and close. A little bit across the hand. Yeah, nice, that's good. Really nice. Okay, stay there. I'm gonna get a close one now, so coming nice and close. Portrait more, okay? For this whole shoot, I was using the Canon EOS R, and my primary lens I used was actually the 70 to 200 f 2.8 L version 2. And the reason that's a good lens is because it does give you the 70 mils, which means you can get some pretty wide, or at least medium shots of your subjects or your couple. But you can also run right into that 200 mil and keep it at f2.8 and get some really awesome compression, which was great when we were shooting here on Lampton Key because it enabled to bring everything together, bring the photo into that sort of one dimension, I guess, but still displaying the three dimensions in a two dimensional image. Oh my gosh. Well, if I'm not confused, you will be. Uh, even that I got around the wrong way, but doesn't matter. With the camera, I had it set on manual mode. You can shoot in something like aperture priority mode or shutter priority mode, and shutter priority mode could be good because you do want to use the right shutter speeds when you're shooting humans or people or things like that, anything that moves. I missed it though. Just come a little bit this way. And I also like these fun moments here when other people sort of involve themselves into the shoot. You know, make sure you capture them and deliver the photo to the client because you know they'll remember that moment and it'll be pretty cool to see that crop up when they're going through the portfolio of photos. So I shoot in manual mode, and I pretty much shoot at the widest possible aperture I can, mainly because I want to get the benefit of that fast aperture and the compression values in the lens, but also because it emits the most light. And this particular day was overcast, it was like a break in the weather, and the clients didn't think it was so great, but it was actually perfect for photography because of the overcast conditions and light. The ambient light was really soft, uh, but I also did use an off-camera flash. I used the Godox V1, uh, just on a light stand, because what it does is it allows you to expose for the background, and in these cases, doing that may actually underexpose your subjects. So using an off-camera flash allows you to have a second source of light other than the ambient natural light, and put that light on your subjects, directly on them where you want it to be. And on my V1 flash here, I actually had a honeycomb modifier just to keep the flash oriented to where I wanted it to go. And I also used barn doors just to stop the spill because I really wanted to focus on the subjects and not get too much on the background or anything else coming into the frame. And the thing in my mind here is to get a variety of shots that I can deliver to them, a few hero shots, you know, a good number of real winners that they can take away. And in order to do that, you need to take lots of shots from lots of different angles and lots of different vantage points using lots of different lighting situations, uh, all sorts of different things, thinking about bringing the background into focus or leaving it out of focus, taking the wide shots, the medium shots, the tight shots, the detailed shots, if you can get close enough for those tight portraits, you've got to get them. So on the way to the spot we were looking to go to, we just stopped here to take some shots. And as you can see, I'm whispering, directing the shot through whispers, you know, but you also use the hand signals and somehow that communication gets across and it works out really well. Okay, so if you face towards me and sort of 
And then we headed down here to this waterfront location, which was quite tricky because of the wind. So what I aimed to do was to face the couple into the wind so that he would be blowing back across their faces, or away from their faces, I should say. And as soon as they would turn their face the other way, it would start blowing across. So that's something to think about. Direct your couple into the wind, and that actually may leave them in a backlit situation. And again, that's where the off-camera flash comes into its own. Being able to position your couple wherever you want to, then expose for the background, and then light them with the off-camera flash, it just makes your options as a photographer a lot more broad and gives you a lot more flexibility in whatever situation you might find yourself in. And so we took a number of shots okay, here. just gonna bring the background into focus, so just hang about. Just gotta fix my camera. And during the whole course of this, I actually had an error throw up on my camera. I think it was error number 70. I've not seen the error before. I still don't know what it is, but I had a suspicion it was something to do with the flash controller that I was using. Okay, it's come back to life. And in the situation here, I just let them know, hey, I've got an error on my camera. There's a problem. I don't know what's going on here. I'm going to fix it. I'm on the way to fixing it now. And there's no point trying to like uh, bluff over it because you're already stressed out. Oh my gosh, my camera's throwing an error. What's wrong? How am I going to have the photos? It's just much better to acknowledge what's happening. See, my camera's thrown an error. And the reason I do this is because it's just what's happening. There's no point. I don't know why I think you might think that the initial reaction would be to try and pretend that the error is not happening. But it was just a thought I had at the time. Oh my gosh, what am I going to say? And the thing to say is, I've got an error. I'm trying to fix it. Okay, I fixed it. I've checked the photos. They're all there. Let's go. We're good to go. Let's carry on. And I don't often show photos on the back of camera when I'm out on shoots, but sometimes you can use it to help the couple relax or help your subjects get more engaged in the photographs or also get some immediate feedback you might need. And then from there, we went off to the Bot Botanical Gardens. Nice. And this was the shoot that the couple really started to relax and get into it and enjoy each other's company more naturally. Showing with the waterfall and the plants in the background. And it only made sense because it was the first spot we went to where we're pretty much the only ones there. Maybe in between the rock and here sort of thing, just in this area here. Yeah, and that'll allow me to see the waterfall. You guys are like a little bit over here, just there. Yeah, nice. Maybe a little bit this way. And you can see them looking a lot more relaxed and responding uh, much better to the prompts. And also I'm giving better prompts, more prompts. And that's because I'm more relaxed as well, because I've gotten to know them over the course of the last hour. And we've shot in a couple of locations and I know what they do and what I'm looking for now. And they also know how to work with me a little bit better. So from that point of view, everything's better. Yeah, you tell me. That, that's nice there. I'll just get that one, looking both this way. That's really nice, because of the waterfall. Look at that. With the waterfall. Oh, you guys look nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Try and hot camera. I'm going to come in for a tight one. OK, that's really nice. Full body, this one. OK, now looking at each other or... And print out a little bit more of your face while you're looking. Yeah, that's good. And looking this way, Yashul. Yep, down to here, that's it. Just grab your eye. Real nice. I'm going to hide this behind you, but it's going to come through like the gap between your head. OK, I'll see where that light is. Yeah, nice. OK, let me test right here. Just gonna bring that light up a bit, make it more powerful. Okay. Let's just check those. Yeah, that light behind is really good. And so we used a few different varieties of off-camera flash up here. And I put it behind them to try and get the golden glow through the man mane as you can see. Oh, it's just a thing of beauty, don't you think? And I want that to sort of make your hair shine in the photo. That's much better with the light behind your head. You see how it makes oh, your head sort of oh, stand yeah, out? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm just going to get some full body ones here. I'm just going to come around to get your face, and some light will come onto it too. So, well, now I can see the flesh. So I'll just come here. Nice, a little bit wider. Yeah, that is nice, really good. Okay. Hold your hand up again. Now, higher. these were all pretty much pose shots or poses they wanted to do or chose themselves or poses we worked together. But they all look really, really nice and natural, and that's what they want. Uh, when it comes to these shoots, I often like the candid shots a lot better. I think it shows them in a much more natural way. It shows the actual personalities, who they are, without them trying to pose or stage to be something they may not necessarily be. 
but they want the pose shots as well and the pose shots are lovely and there's a place for them but while you're on these shoots as well look for opportunities to take candid shots and grab them because all through the pose shots in their portfolio you're going to deliver them little nuggets of personality just to pop out and say hey that's us you know that pose shot is you and me but that photo there that's us Okay, the other thing is during this video, you would have noticed I did use a smaller lens. It was the RF 35mm f1.8 STM IS macro. Uh, it's a good little lens. Uh, the gear does not really matter a whole lot. Whatever camera you have or lens you have, shoot at the fastest possible aperture. Keep your shutter speed in about the right zone for human movement between that sort of 1 60th of a second at the slowest and then from there. If you're using a flash, generally that's somewhere up to around about 1 250th of a second or 1 200th of a second, unless you jump into high speed sync. But you probably won't need to in these situations. It'll allow you to keep your ISO level nice and low. As you're going to take the shot, meter off the background, expose for the background if you've got the use of an off-camera flash, and that will allow you to then light the subject. If you want to check the power setting for the flash or the flash compensation, what I do is I meter for the background, I then focus on the subject, take a shot using ETTL or TTL, whatever the automatic setting is for you, I then take a note of what the flash settings are at that point, flick it into manual mode and then boost up or down from there. Even a bit more rudimentary option that I often use is I'll just set the off-camera flash at 132 power, I think it is, and then I'll go up and down from there. Usually it's a little bit lower, but it just gives you an opportunity to set it at some mid-range power that you just land on, take a test shot, and see does the flash need to go up or down from there and make the adjustments accordingly. Saves you having to work out switching from TTL to manual on the flash. That's just what I do. It's like you're just out walking, it's very natural. Yeah, nice. You got it. And then after this, we went down to a waterfall here and we did some walking towards the camera shots. People love them. They ask for them. Uh, they want them. So we did a few of those. And at that point, you have to remember just to switch your focusing mode from one shot into servo. If indeed you've been what, using one shot, I always use one shot. I just like the way it gives a much finer point of focus. I'm just going to get more of the fountain. So from here, yeah, that is better. Nice looking this way. Hands look good, nice and relaxed. Natural hair looks good, shoes. Okay. And then we've got some other shots of them just sitting here, relaxing on this seat, and just a matter of positioning them correctly, and they just did it themselves. By now, they were naturals. And so that was pretty much the shoot. After here, we did two other locations, but by that stage, my GoPro was running low on battery, and I was like, I don't want to think about that anymore. I thought I've got enough footage to do this video and I reckon indeed I have. I hope it was helpful to you. So these ones are a bit more like natural oh, of you guys oh sitting yeah. there. Nice. Yeah. nice and sharp, smiling, looking around and then nice. yeah, out so with the fountains. And if you want to see any other videos like this or from other shoots I've done, you can check them out right here, right now. And otherwise, thanks a lot for watching and we'll catch you next time. See ya.